Okay, folks, thanks for coming along. Uh, thanks for hanging around as long as well and getting through the fire alarm and all of that. Um, okay, we're really genuinely privileged to have Matt Dwyer joining us now. Matt Dwyer is the Director of Participation and Growth at the ECB. He came over here, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, in July last year. Yeah, kicked off in August, off the boat. Yeah, so he came over from Australia um, where he was actively involved in um, maybe not so much the overhaul of Australian cricket, but certainly a, a revamp of the structures of Australian cricket, um, which reaped the benefits of the big bash, as we've seen, and so on and so on. So, Matt, if you just want to explain a little bit before we get going on the issues of how to grow the game in, in the UK, just a little bit about yourself and your role in Australia. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Um, good to be here. As you, as you said, uh, five months kind of off the boat and, uh, and getting used to life in the UK. Brought the family over and... Um, you know, I'm what you probably, you know, you can't just Google Mike Gatting, so I probably need to give you a bit of background as to who I took over from, but um, I'm what you'd probably call a cricket nuffy in Australian circles. My, uh, my old man's going to his 50th year of cricket this year. He, uh, he bats 11, he doesn't bowl. That's the kind of secret to his longevity, but he just, he loves the game, and I've been a 30-year uh, kind of player and volunteer myself. Had a few years playing um, Premier Cricket, and then a bit of injury kind of kicked in and went on to to just, you know, captain coach a local club. And, uh, and then, you know, at the end of it, I was kind of a chairman of a cricket association that had 350 teams in it as a, as a volunteer and, uh, and then got the opportunity with Cricket Australia to kind of come in with them um, and do a, a role that essentially was about inspiring kids to pick up the game. And um, that was the, the launch of the Big Bash League and, and joining that with participation and, and really trying to, to bring it all together and give ourselves the best opportunity to, to try and get some kids into the game. And... Before we come to uh, issues of specifically UK cricket and where we are at, on a recreational level, uh, w when you were back in Australia, Cricket Australia recognised that they needed uh, a new approach, a more of a marketing-driven approach, recognising that cricket, like any other sport or any other pastime, is fighting the battle of the schoolyard, how you described it to me. Yeah, yeah. So that's where you came in, that there was an avenue that, that Cricket Australia recognised they needed to go down that's where you came in. Yeah, my, I had um, 15 years kind of sales experience and was a sales director at Mars and Nestle and, uh, and Cricket Australia kind of identified that we'd done a great job of providing opportunities for people to play and you could, um, if you wanted to play, you could turn, wake up on a Saturday morning, walk down the road, you'd find a ground somewhere, um, there'd be a pitch in the middle and there'd be some stumps so you can have a hit. Um, but what they were kind of noticing was that people weren't doing that anymore and we need to be more proactive in... You know, selling can be such a kind of you know, somewhat dirty word, but how do we articulate why a child would choose cricket over, over any other sport? And, um, you know, it's a really competitive kind of landscape to capture the hearts and minds of kids these days. It's, um, you know, Chance to Shine did a survey here recently and they asked kids to name up to, up to three sports and there were 34 different sports named and you kind of go, OK, well, when I grew up and you probably grew up, there was either a footy or a cricket bat and you kind of chose between that. And then you've got the other, other challenges as far as iPhones and technology and so to capture kids' hearts and minds is a, uh, is a bit of a challenge. But, uh, you know, Cricket Australia thought that cricket had a great proposition for kids. So, um, you know, how many mums out there knew that cricket developed nine of the ten fundamental movement skills? How much do they know about the spirit of the game, the safety of the game? Um, the opportunity to go on and play for your country and travel around the world and we just hadn't done a great job in communicating that out to out to parents and, and teachers I mean that was the other the big part as well we had you know, 90 percent of primary school teachers in Australia are, uh, are female and and if we're not relevant to females we've got a bit of a challenge so so we kind of went through a a, a big change and that led to the launch of the big bash league and um, you know we linked that with our junior participation programs and and now they've got some outstanding results. They've, uh, and, and those results are that participation is, is improving in Australia, and especially yeah. amongst uh, new crowds, if you like, you know, yeah. uh, females and, and, and young girls as well in particular. Yeah. And, and, and that is reflected in the figures. Yeah, absolutely. So um, junior cricket is, is, they've just rolled over the new sets of stats, and that's grown 50% in the last four years. So um, there's three times the amount of kids playing cricket in school now. Uh, there's a 40% increase in female cricket, so, the, you know, and they're diversifying the game. There's more people of different multicultural backgrounds playing, and they've had a real, a real focus on that. So, there are some learnings there. And um, when the ECB kind of gave me a call and said, "Are you interested in uh, coming over to the other side of the world and being based at Lords?" It was a, uh, 
It was a dream come true for me and I'm pretty honoured to get the chance.